This truly is a martyr who shed his blood for the name of Christ, who did not fear the threats of judges, but attained the heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Today the church celebrates the feast of Pope St. Callistus, comes to us from the early 3rd century, died a martyr's death. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who raised up Pope St. Callistus I to serve the church, and attend devoutly to Christ's faithful departed. Strengthen us, we pray, by his witness to the faith, so that rescued from the slavery of corruption, we may merit an incorruptible inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted, planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season, whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the, wind, for the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! You love the seat of honor in synagogues and greeting in marketplaces. Woe to you! You are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe to you, scholars of the law! You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Jesus Christ. We're in chapter 11, the end of chapter 11 in the Gospel of Luke. It began beautifully, teacher, teach us how to pray, and we get the Our Father. Eventually we get the cleaning, the, the, um, the, the healing of the woman the, possessed by the demon, and we hear that criticism from the scribes and Pharisees. He's doing this by the devil. You know, he's expelling devils because he's a devil himself, and he can do that. 
And this is where the Lord finally loses it. This is that moment. As we're getting, I mean, if you read any of the Gospels, Jesus' patience with, with the scribes and Pharisees begins to run out. His charity, let's call it, not his patience, his charity of not saying what needs to be said. But he's also doing it for the people in the crowd who live their whole lives being taught, you're not as good as them. You're not as smart as them. You're not as versed in the knowledge. You just do what they tell you to do, and you'll live a good holy life. That's a good boy. Now go away, right? And he's showing them that holiness is open to everyone. Even that woman who gets it a few days ago in the gospel, blessed is the woman, you know, the breast that, that nursed you and the woman who bore you. He says, no, it's anybody who hears the word of God and meditates on it, has that access, has that familiarity with me and through me to God the Father. Well, here he's finally now talking about things that he knew as he could read the minds, and he knew what was common practice. And he's going after the Pharisees, and he's going after the, the scribes, the lawyers at the time. Um, they prided themselves on the following of the law of giving your first fruits, your first meats, your first every, the produce and things that you grew. You gave it for the support of the temple. Right? And you gave it for the support of the Levites who then passed it on to the priests. Well, here he's showing them, you know, they pride themselves that, look, we're even better than the law because we not only tithe on what the law required us to do, what the Torah told us to do, we tithe on the things we don't even have to. That's how much better we are, right? And so what is he talking about? Household, your little herb garden, right? The, what they would use to enhance their food. Even those littlest things, they say, aren't we better than that? And he said, you know, you do that. You're so concerned about that. If you spend half as much time trying to contemplate what 10% of a rosemary bush is, you know, and making sure that you meticulously give them exactly what they're required. If you spend so much time worrying about keeping yourself holy, keeping your, your lives is in relationship to God good, then we would not, then like, I wouldn't have to be here, maybe, <laughs> you might say along the way. Um, and also, too, they love the, you know, they did all this, as he knows, to be seen. Like, look at us, aren't we wonderful? And so he talks about the front row at synagogues, right? Because those were the positions of honor. The closer to the front you sat, it was considered this, you know, that you were considered by the community to be the wisest. Now, Catholics have turned it upside down. Everybody wants the last row, right, in the, in the church. But, it, but it's that idea. So he's saying you love the front row, and it's an insult if you don't. You want, But it's not about being close to the what they would have had, the tabernacle, the sacred Torah, right? For them, it was to be seen in the front row. That's what it was all about. And then the scribes chime in at this moment, too, and say, well, wait a minute, you're getting kind of close to us, and he's, fine, you want me to know, tell you what's wrong with you guys? I'll tell you. The scribes were the ones who lived their lives studying the law. And they were the ones who would tell the lowly people, you do this, and you're fine. Like, okay, you do that. What they wouldn't tell them, what they loved, was they knew the loopholes of the law. They knew the exceptions. They knew, so they didn't have to follow the law that they were giving to other people, right? They knew what you didn't have to do. And in that case, right, you're, you're doing everything to study the law, but you won't even give them a little break of lifting the finger, right? So, so he's, he's calling it as he sees it. He's not making false accusations of anything they're not doing. He's, he's calling it out and saying, you know this, and they know it too. What are you doing about it? Now, later on, we'll hear, you know, all of this is beginning to say, like, okay, we've had enough of this guy. Even if he can do fun healings to watch, we've got to get rid of him. And again, we're at late chapter 11 of Luke, so we're getting to that point where we're going to begin to hear about the passion uh, and what's going to happen. Now, Paul, writing to the Galatians, shows us that it still hadn't changed. What we're doing on the inside, what we're thinking on the outside, how we're acting on the outside. And so he gives them a list. If you ever need an exam of conscience to go into confession, you know, or you need an exam of conscience, beautiful thing, make a copy of this and keep it next to your bed, you know, the nice tradition saying an act of contrition at the end of the day, then we could say this, Lord, how have I avoided immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like? And then, Lord, how have I done these in the past day? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Right? If we just followed that, I mean, sometimes there's these big, beautiful examples of conscience, which are all wonderful, but here, right from the Scripture itself, right from the Bible, what not to do, what we should be doing in our life. Today we honor St. Callistus, comes to us from the 
late 100s, early 200s, a true success story in the church. He rises from slave to pope to bishop of Rome. In the early days, he's given the custody. He's the caretaker of the only piece of property that by the late 100s Christians owned. It was a cemetery, catacombs, right, uh, in the um, outskirts of town. And he lived and served as the, the caretaker of them. Eventually, he's ordained a priest. He'll be uh, elected pope. But because of that, the, the, one of the catacombs in the city is called today named for him, the Catacombs of St. Callistus. It's a place to visit and see where early Christians were buried, where they celebrated mass, uh, you know, a place to truly reflect on the early days of the church. He, after, as Pope, incurred the wrath of, um, he incurred the wrath of, of two other saints we celebrate together, Pontian and Hippolytus, because he advocated for a return, for reconciliation, for mercy in those who left the church and then wanted to repent and come back. At the time, the argument was, can they do anything to repent? And some said no. And some said, well, they have to make a public act of penance, and then they can come back. And, right? He uh, advocated on the side of, uh, you know, there's a, there should be a way uh, to, to admit them back. And this was the fight. Now, separate from the fights within the church that he faced, there was also the fights outside. And that was that every now and then an emperor came along who was intimidated by the Christians, threatened by the Christians, and so he himself was arrested, was taken to a well, they say, and dropped down into the bottom of a well where he died. Eventually his body was picked up in the middle of the night and brought in it, I think is in the church of, in, in the Trastevere, St. Saint Cecilia in Trastevere, St. Mary in Trastevere, but um, died, you know, living that life and, and martyr's death and then, you know, eventually will face his own. Together with one voice, let us offer God our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Holy Spirit animate each of her members with a new joy and zeal. We pray to the Lord. For those in authority, may God give them the grace of humility. We pray to the Lord. For those burdened by poverty, homelessness, sickness, or hopelessness, may God give them peace and provide relief for them. We pray to the Lord. For this community gathered here, may God preserve us in harmony and humility through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they find endless love, joy, and peace in God's embrace, we pray to the Lord. For the Mass is being offered today for God's blessing for Duane and Joyce Dada, and for special intentions, we pray to the Lord. For our own private prayers and petitions that we silently place before the Lord. For all of our needs, we pray to the Lord. Gathering our prayers, we turn to our Blessed Mother, asking her to hear our prayers and to assist us as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to you, we, we offer you sacrificial gifts, O Lord, to commemorate your blessed martyr, Pope St. Callistus, 
whom no temptation could separate from the unity of the body of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Callistus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, says the Lord. For those following Mass through live stream, we offer this spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Made new by these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, that imitating the wondrous constancy of blessed St. Callistus, we may merit an eternal reward for suffering endured through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.